Today's scripture is New Testament, Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. As I read it through today's message, I hope all of you will listen to the voice of a living God. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Last weekend, I delivered a message, if the poor, if the rich can go to the heaven. And today's sermon is also starting with stories about the rich. I'd like to ask this question to you. Who do you think are the rich? Who are the rich? There is some definitions. According to different community and society, there might be some conditions to meet to be the rich. Maybe those living in nice mansion with a nice car, with a second house, and many other things. They might be considered as rich. Do you agree with that definition? Let's say there is a person who has about $10 million. Of course, he's living in a luxury house with a great car. He's living wealthy lives. But he also is $20 million in debt. Then do you think that person rich or just a normal average person? Who do you think are the rich? I recently read one article about a special marketing strategies targeted for the rich. There's a designer brand, and they develop a very special handbag. And to buy that handbag, you have already bought several products from the brand before then you are eligible to buy the special bag. So I read about the stories. So no matter how much money you have, you can buy that bag with money only. You have already bought several other products from that brand in the past, then you are entitled to buy that new special bag. Do you think is that strategy working? Ironically, this st strategy works pretty well. And many try to buy that one, and others envy of them. Rich people want others to recognize how rich they are. I'm not sure any of you have such kind of bag, but even if you have a, that kind of a bag, some people do not recognize it at all, but at least those who know luxury goods will recognize it and maybe envy of you. So some riches want to be different from others. In the past, we have frequently used the word of VIP, which means very important person. Whenever you heard about VIP, you feel satisfied. But VIP these days becomes very common. So people come up with new words of VVIP or VVVIP. The, the credit card that I have has VIP on its name, so I thought it's a very uh, prestigious one, but the same bank offers VVIP and VVVIP credit card as well. So my card with the VIP is a very normal one. So it's kind of a strategy to win the hearts of consumers. Then why do people want to be rich? Almost all people want to be rich but they have a different reason to be rich. If I am rich, some other people might be envy 
of me, then that makes me feel better. That might be the reason. Or someone want to be rich to live in luxury house. Or some want to be rich to be respected. The reasons might be different behind their desire to be rich. But if you deep dive into exploring the reason to be the rich, it comes to this conclusion, which is about they long for freedom. Why they want to have more money? That might be because you can do anything with money. You can do anything as you like with the money. That's what they believe. Once they have enough money, they can do almost everything they want to do. In other words, they long for freedom. They can eat whatever they want to, and they can go wherever they want to go. And they can also help others whenever they want, and they can have anything they want. They want to reach that status. They want to achieve the freedom to do anything they like with the money. And for them, money is the tool for them to achieve that status. That might be why they want to be rich. From the perspective, those who do not enjoy freedom is not rich indeed. Only those who have enough money or power and enjoy the freedom, then they are rich in fact. If they don't enjoy any freedom, regardless of how much money they have, they are not rich at all. For example, they save a lot of money, and finally they become rich. They bought building and house, but they are having very strong habit of saving money so they can spend their money well. They cannot buy the food they want. They cannot go to the places they want to go, and they just sacrifice everything to save money. Maybe very later on, they can enjoy the freedom with the money they have saved a lot, then that is meaningful as well. However, if they just end up not doing anything they want after saving money only, then that person will not be the rich. They just to a person who has a lot of a fortune. They just to have a hobby of saving the mon money, not rich indeed. Rich indeed is person who enjoy freedom. Whether it can be money or fortune, power or popularity, if they have enough tools to enjoy freedom, they are the rich. So in that perspective, if the one has a lot of money but still desire to have more, then they are not the rich in technically speaking. Let's say there is a person who have one million dollars, but still he want to have more. He still have some thirsty to earn more. Then he is not rich. He may belong to the poor. He still works hard, and he is still hungry to have more. So regardless how much money you are having currently, if the person feels that's not enough, then that person is not rich. He is still slave to money and controlled and ruled by the money. If you are obsessed with money, then you are not the true rich. If money rules you, if money rules and controls you, you are not rich. When you are free from the money and when you get freedom from the money, you will be the real rich. I'm not saying we should ignore money. We have to earn a lot. We have to save money. But if we enjoy freedom with the money, that is the value of the money, and we are rich. That's the person who is truly rich. We can still find some rich that our God are pleased with. The true rich are not slaves to money, but those who control it. 
a person who enjoys true freedom based on the money. But if there is a person who uses all that money to fulfill his desires only, he might not be the true rich, even though he is rich. If he spends all the money to satisfy his desire, and if he enjoys freedom by doing so, he will be the true rich. However, it doesn't please our God, and he is not a rich man that is right before our Lord. And the rich man God is pleaded with is not such kind of person. And the rich man our God is pleased with is taking care of neighbors and is contributing to good works with the fortune he has. That means instead of using money to satisfy his desire, but spending them to do God's will. That's true rich and wonderful rich. When a young man came to Jesus and asked how he can obtain eternal life, Jesus answered to him graciously that you should sell what you have and give it to the poor and follow me. Our Jesus said that you have to use the money that you have for the interest of the poor. So it's our Lord's invitation. You have to sell what you have. That means you just give away everything poor. And then you can enjoy the freedom. So the Lord invited the young man. But the young man was rich. He has a lot of things. So he worried and concerned a lot and going back to home. And those who try to help the poor is the real rich, and those who try to do God's will is the true rich. I just started today's sermon with the people with the money, but you know the people with the popularity, power, and authority can be another rich man. They can be true rich man, and they can be also rich man that he, that our Lord find them pleased and righteous. If they use all the things they have for their own desire, then they can be rich, but they cannot please the God. Of course, they can enjoy the freedom, but they don't please our Lord. Those who enjoy the freedom are the true rich, and by using their money and their freedom to please the God is, are the true rich. Let me tweak the question. Then, who is the strong and who are the weak? Is the tall person the strong? Are the men the strong? Are the people with the disease the weak? Are those with the disabilities weak? There might be many different criteria to tell the strong from the weak, but there is a one important criteria to tell the difference is that the weak can be defined in that way. The weak are someone who wants something and persons who have a need, they can be the weak. And a person who lacks nothing, a person who has nothing to gain, and those who are satisfied with themselves are the strongest because no one can tear down his castle because they do not have anything to have more and they are satisfied with themselves. So they are the strong all the time. When you have something to gain, you will be the weak. And those who need something will be the weak. If you need to have something, then you will be the weaker to the person who owns that. And if you have something that others want to have, then you are the stronger and the other is the weaker. There is a man and he loves a woman. And that woman is short, 
with a little power and strength and very feeble. And the man is very tall and strong. And who is the weak and who is the strong in that relationship? The man who tried to win the hearts of the woman is the weak. He doesn't know what to do whenever she's around him. And he will be doing everything to on the heart of the her. And he's very small before that lady because he has something to earn, which is her love. So he's the weaker. So those who has a desire are always the weaker. And those who have something they want to have are always the weak. And our desire always make us weak. And those who always have something to feel are the weak. Sometimes we refer to this state of weakness as poor. Being weak sometimes equal to being poor. That means ones who need something is poor and one who lacks is the poor. And the poor are the ones who have something to gain. In that perspective, the state of being in need and want is not that positive. Because they need something, they are longing for something else, so it cannot be positive. Today's script make some of you confused, and you may have questions of what it really means. And today's scripture says, the poor in spirit, and blessed are the poor in spirit. That's today's message. Actually, we like the saying, we don't usually say the poor in spirit. It's very biblical expression. On the contrary, here in Korea, we, we have this saying a lot. Even if you don't have much, you are rich at heart. That may be uh, much familiar to all of you. So that might be, comes from the difference between the cultures. So even though you are not that physically and uh, financially rich, if you are rich at heart, then that is rich. That might be the intention behind that uh, praises. But the Bible says the poor in spirit or the poor in hearts. So it can be interpreted in this way in the context of the explanation that I just gave you. If you are full of heart to own something, then you are blessed. If you're longing for something, then you are blessed. If you feel something is in short, then you are blessed. So the weak is blessed. Then how we can understand that? If you still need something not enough, how they can be blessed. And to find the answer, we have to pay attention to one phrase in today's scripture, that is in spirit or in heart. Technically speaking, this sentence goes, Blessed are the poor in spirituality. Uh, if I try again, then blessed are the spiritually poor people. Then spiritually poor people, what does it mean to be spiritually poor? The German modern translation of the Bible translated into blessed is the one who stands with the empty hands before God. What is important here is before God. From the spiritual perspective, equals to before God in German translation of the Bible. 
Then to put everything together, it may say a person who longs for God in front of God, a person who feels inadequate before God, a person who is weak all the time before God, and who tries to get all the time from God, then that person is blessed. No matter how big their power is, no matter how much fortune they have, they are weak and they are small before the Lord, and they are poor before the Lord, and they ask for something before the Lord, and they try everything to earn something before the Lord, then they are poor in spirit. Being poor can have a different meaning. That is empty. Being poor, when we say we are poor, that means we have nothing in our house. Our house is empty. There's a lot of empty places. So we do not have much things that should be there. So that's the being poor sometimes equals to being empty. So in Chinese version of the Bible, expresses being poor in this way, an empty heart. So they say, blessed are those with an empty heart, with an empty heart. So those poor in spirit is people with the empty hearts and people who vacate their minds and hearts. That's the poor in spirit, according to the Bible. There are people who have a terrible sense of inferiority in their hearts. No matter what they do, their inferiority complex is openly expressed. They work not to lose at work, and they work not hard to their self-esteem. And they, their heart is full of hearts, so no matter what happens, that heart appears and they just sometimes get angry very easily and do not cooperate with others because he, their heart always bothers them. And sometimes there are people who are filled with idea of earning more money. They sometimes want to earn more money by deceiving others. They always think about earning money whenever, uh, even during the sleeping, working, or eating. They just full of uh, earning money. And s there are people who are always filled with the idea of desires. They are all about desire. And there are people who are having a lot of inferiority and having the idea of earning more money and having the hearts full of desires. And all of them are rich in their spirit and heart. Their heart is full. They are not rich. They are not poor. Because their heart is filled with something else, so they are full and rich in hearts and not relevant to get into the kingdom of heaven. So the poor in spirit is those who try to emptify and emptify their hearts. They are poor in hearts, they are poor in money, thinking, and their heart and thought are not controlled by some desire. They have more hearts and more areas to be empty, and they are poor in spirit. So Don does said in his book of Jesus the Stranger, says, the poor in heart are those who do not confine themselves, people who do not define who they are. And the poor in spirit are those who still believe in, and people who don't think they've reached it already. A person who is completely obsessed with what he has is not poor in heart. A student who has a plan all of his life is not poor in heart. 
A scholar who thinks he always knows everything is not poor in heart. They are owner, and they are owned. They are rich, and they are unhappy, even though they don't recognize it. Do not think you are poor in heart, singing the hidden sense of inferiority that fills your heart. If you are full of feelings of inferiority, then your heart is rich in your spirit with inferiority. What is sin? Sin is rejecting God's hand of love. It is a deni denier of the possibility of a new life by clinging to oneself, clinging to yourself and your possessions. It is an attitude of life that believes that you can live without a relationship with God. That is sin. When Abraham left his hometown after receiving God's command, that's the poor in his spirit. He wasn't obsessed with his position or home. He threw away everything and left with God in search of new possibilities that is poor in heart and spirit. Blessed are those who stand with empty hands before God. For such a person, the kingdom of God will be his. While listening to the sermon, some of you may think that that interpretation is the same what I thought or some others might say his explanation is different from what I believed. Then, if you believe you are right, then you are rich because your heart is full of everything, so there is no space, something else to get into. If your heart has a lot of empty spaces, so the God's voices and God's messages can get into your heart to settle down and to grow, and your heart should be empty to receive more messages, then you are the poor in spirit. Today, our Lord is trying to find people who are poor in spirit, and He blessed them. I hope all of us to be that poor in spirit. Let's pray. We we'll listen to God's voice today, our Holy Lord. Come to our hearts that are stuck with the things that fill our hearts and lose the bones. So let us to pour out all the useless things in our hearts. Give us a truly free heart. Give us an empty heart. Give us hearts to long for, to pray desperately before the Lord. Let us reach out our empty hands to you. Blessed are the poor in spirit. That's the message you te teach us today. So we pray in your name. Amen.